Good morning, everyone. I received my King Oyster Culture Syringe from Sporeworks yesterday. You can see it here. They package it nicely. It's all sanitar sanitary in the Ziploc bag. Includes a fresh, sterile needle tip. It has a cap off there. You just unscrew it and put the needle on it in front of the flow hood. They also include a microscopy slide if you're a student. You want to look under the microscope to see the mycelium growing or if you buy spores. Very cool. So for liquid cultures today, I'm going to be using these large jars that you've seen me use before. These are one gallon jars that I bought from fungi.com, I think. But you can use any, any jars that you can find the uh, lids that are going to be pressure cookable. You know, polypropylene lids. And then each of these lids, you see I've drilled oh about quarter inch eh, about an eighth inch holes you know, some, somewhere around that size as long as you get enough uh, airflow going through you can actually even drill just one larger hole and then I have 110 millimeter synthetic filter discs that I've got from fungi.com as well and they last forever and I was thinking too, too about using the plastic lids notice how my my disc is nice and white, no rust on it. From uh, you know, using jars and metal metal r lids and rings, even though if it gets rust on it, it'll still work fine. But it just looks clean. And to into each one of these jars, I have these magnetic stirrer bars. I think this one is one and a half inches or two inches. But you can see it's a octagonal shape, or uh, yeah, octagonal. And what that's gonna do is when I have my stirring plate, with the magnet that spins around will catch that little bar and spin it around and mix everything in there. And then you don't have to do any of these drills where you shake the jar around and slosh the mixture up onto the lid makes things way easier. So I'm going to go ahead and start measuring out ingredients to fill these jars. Always put a little bit of water in the bottom of your jar starting out. That way when you're putting in the yeast and the sugar it's not going to stick and clump up at the bottom. Now because if you remember for my 250 milliliter recipes I'm using half a gram of yeast and 10 grams of dextrose sugar so because I'm quadrupling that for these large jars I'm going to be using two grams of any kind of yeast and just tap it out on this foil there close that. doesn't have to be right on the money as long as it's fairly close. And then I'm going to need 40 grams of dextrose sugar. Now of course you can use maltose, probably well, you could probably use any sugar to work, I would imagine, but I like using dextrose because I can get it cheap. It's used in the brewing industry. You can get maltose pretty cheap too, if you, especially if you have a uh, like a homemade beer and wine store where you can buy your own beer kits and stuff. That's how I bought this large bag of dextrose. Probably, I think I only paid like five bucks. There's 40 grams. Go ahead and rinse that off. Reuse the same foil to put over the top of the lid when you cook it. And I'll fill this jar halfway up with water. Just use some, some lukewarm water.
give it a mix with a spoon. Make sure you get the corners of the jar that nothing's clotted up in there. You can see the magnetic stir bar sticking to the spoon. Now because, <clears throat> because the small cooker can really only hold one jar at a time, that's what I'm going to have to do. Since I want to do two of these jars, I want one of these jars to culture, be fully cultured, and store as a backup in my fridge as a master. And then I'm going to make another one that is a liquid culture master that I'll pull from to start making grain bags. And hopefully I won't have to work too much from this because again I'm going to try to get spores from some old king oysters and get my own culture going off a, a spore print and if you're wondering most likely that the culture that I got from spore works is a multi spore culture and I've said before too with, oyster, with oyster mushrooms it's so such a small amount of difference between having a uh, a culture that someone's isolated and a multi-spore inoculation as far as yields it's it really I'd say doing this multi-spore is gonna uh, be just as good for you the the only advantage I've seen to doing isolated strains with oysters is that you can get some different cap shapes I've gotten some that uh, some blue oysters before for instance that had more of a an umbo like a an umbrella shape which was cool, and they, but they tasted just the same, and I got the same amount of yield off of them as I would have done a, a multi-spore. So, have that in mind. So, I'm going to put the lid on this. I already got water in that. Always make sure you have water in your cooker. And then I'm going to pressure cook it for a total of 50 minutes. I'm waiting for these jars to cool down enough so I can inoculate them. Again, I really like using this uh, infrared temperature reader. I can shine it on the one that I cooked up first and it tells me 77 degrees. And I can shine on this one and it tells me around 90 degrees. Maybe even warmer, yeah. Between 90 and 95. So this is a really great tool to see when the temperature is cool enough to see to inoculate it. I'm going to wait till it at least gets down to about 85 degrees or under that. Both of these jars are ready to inoculate. We'll go ahead and wipe down the outside of this bag. Keep it clean. Package sterilized needle in there. Let's go ahead and wipe the portion of the rim down since it's been sitting out for a while. You may find that the caps on these are pretty difficult to remove with just your fingers. So you might have to get a really hard grip on it. So go ahead and use your alcohol soaked uh, paper towel or rag to get it started, get a good grip on there. You can see I'm uh, peeling this from the top it so it's facing the flow hood. 
I'll go ahead and remove this cap all the way and then screw it together tightly. These lids are really easy to uh, get free compared to metal lids on cord jars as well. I'm going to put about two cc's of culture in each jar. That'll be adequate. And just squirt it right in there. Make sure that you're just dripping it into the jar. You don't need to put the needle down below the opening of the jar. You always want the, the sterile air from the flow hood to get in between everything. Make sure uh, no contamination is coming off the syringe where I touched it or anything like that. Go ahead and clean this one up as well. Give it another two cc's. That's a, it's a bit difficult to tell how many cc's you have at the start when they put the label at the top of the number. But you know, like, where else are you going to put a label? No room. Make sure that's hand tight and snug. Go ahead and shake off any excess you have on the needle tip of your culture syringe because you can always come back to this. Culture syringes will last a decent amount of time. Probably, I probably wouldn't use one that's older than, oh, two months, three months. I'm not really sure how long they do last like that. I've never seen anybody do a video or a study on it. I'm sure Sporeworks knows. <clears throat> you can tell on this, they, uh, they have a batch number made on February the 17th. So only about a month and about a week and a half. So I can probably can't fit that in this bag. So, I'll go ahead and put this culture syringe in its own larger Ziploc bag and that'll get stored back in the refrigerator. I'll go ahead and mark these jars with King Oyster and the date that I inoculated them on. Always keep track. And then it'll take about a week and a half, probably, to fully colonize the jar with liquid culture. And I'll put one in the fridge for a backup, and the other one we'll immediately start using to make wheat grain spawn. So we can do some cased grain blocks, again with the king whiskers. I think that's the route I'm going to try to go with. <laughs> 